Welcome to Contact. We're starting a new series today titled Think With Your Heart. And today's message is Heart Abilities. Now, I like the sound of this new series. Yeah, uh, yeah. Tell it's us, an tell entire about series it. about your heart. And so we, th we're just starting out by talking about uh, heart abilities. And so often people don't think that you think with your heart. You know, in the world that we live in today, people think that they think with their head. So, that's, right. That's and the then, and then shown. there's the complexity of your emotions right. yeah, and your, your, your brain feelings. participates, but it's it's a it's not just your brain that does the job. Yeah. So it's very intriguing. Yeah. But I know that this message is really going to bless you and probably clear up some misconceptions. So you need to stick with us. We will be right back. see a generation of kids sold in love with God. It's for the commitment we take everybody on this platform. Now you are the answer to a generation's cry for deliverance. It's time for an awakening among carnal Christians that says we are going to do something about it. Oh, our God is God. FLBI sets you on the right track to fulfilling the Lord's will for your life. On-site registrations for the new fall trimester begin August 12th. We look forward to helping you fulfill your destiny at Faith Landmarks Bible Institute. With distinctive values and a dedicated staff, VCA sets itself apart from the academic normality and encourages the advancement of both social and intellectual skills. Check us out online at myvcanights.com. Looking for a place where your child can grow in a Christian atmosphere while you handle the tasks of everyday life? Bring your infant or toddler to our new Child Development Center. Open to kids ages six months to four years, our qualified and experienced staff provide a loving and nurturing environment that is dedicated to the growth, development, safety, and well-being of your children. We encourage you to come check us out or visit our website at faithlandmarks.org. Hallelujah. Okay, Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7, it says, For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Now, in um, these passages that I'm about to show you, what I'm doing is just lifting out one of these statements. Uh, you read previous and, and afterwards, and you'll see that uh, in the first two of these, uh, the condition of hearts being described uh, that's not a good thing. Okay, but what we're doing is we're looking at what we're learning about our hearts. Okay, so as he thinks in his heart, so is he. So usually when we hear think, we think brain. Because brain is what we've been associated with for thinking. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, well, a new ability, you think with your heart. Amen. Now that's God talking about your heart. That went over really big, praise the Lord. So let's talk about your brain for a few minutes. Your brain is overrated. It's nothing but an organ. Technically, it's made out of dust. Hallelujah. It, when you leave your body, your brain stays there. But yet, you have a mind. 
Actually, you have the mind of Christ. But you notice it's, you don't have the brain of Christ. See the point? See, just trying to illustrate to you, let's get, get our thinking, you know, we're going to just push that over to the side about the brain. Thank God for your brain. It's a marvelous organ. But that's it. Hallelujah. Now, usually when people are thinking about thinking and, they're, they're th they're, and your brain it, it comes into the subject, uh, you find from looking at the Bible that brain thoughts, and it's, there's a, a minor discussion about that in the New Testament, okay? Brain thoughts are fleeting and temporary. Thoughts of your heart is a completely different thing. For instance, uh, you go to the mall, praise the Lord, you walk through the mall, you're, all these things are going through your brain. If you have your phone, your brain, your phone is stimulating your thoughts because, you know, your phone knows you're there and it's trying to sell you something. Come on. <laughs> Ooh, are you out there wondering, how did, the, how did it know? Well, it's got this thing called a geolocator on it. Yeah, but anyway, you get close to the mall and it starts selling you things. So, but, but while you're walking through the mall, your heart is doing something else. Your heart is thinking job, family, maybe even my leg hurts. Okay, and if your heart has been trained, then your heart says, well, you know what? I'm not going to accept this pain in my leg because I believe that Jesus bore my sicknesses and carried my diseases and by his stripes I am healed. So you see, out of your heart also comes your believing. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness. So it's like there's this mixture of thinking and believing that comes out of your heart. Now therein lies a bit of the quandary because there's times when the thoughts of your heart and your believing, your desire to believe, don't match. So uh, this is the way I was before I got saved. You know, my heart wanted God, but my thoughts, we're going in a different direction. I was easily influenced by things around me. But when, once I got saved, it was a completely different story for me. How many of you can relate to that? Okay, praise God. You know, when he was drawing you into the kingdom, that, that was, the, of course, the biggest moment of your life. Okay, and your heart for him, even though you weren't saved, your heart for him was evident. Otherwise, you wouldn't have even been seeking. Amen. Now, not to forget that a good portion of the world today have a heart for God. They don't know they don't have him, just like I didn't know. You didn't know. But I was certainly looking for him. It would be a misnomer for us to think that people in the world don't want God. Oh, hallelujah, are you out there? God is good. You wanted him, didn't you? Well, here you are. That's what Jesus meant when he said, the fields are ripe to harvest. Those people, you know, that Jesus won there in, in that town, they were already hungry for God. Oh, I'm glad I came to church today. Go ahead and say amen. amen. All right. Now, the New Testament tells us the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and of the spirit. Okay, now your spirit is a completely different thing from your heart. As a matter of fact, what we're going to see today from the Word of God is, see, your nature, who you are in Christ, how many of you are a Christian? 
Okay, your new nature is, is your spirit. Your heart is a little different. And you need to know the difference. That's the reason why it says the word divides. So you can see the difference. Point being is that sometimes after Christians get saved, they're still having heart troubles. Might even be the case today. And God wants you to know he's, he wants to help you out of whatever troubles you might be having. You know, people say, well, my heart's right. Not necessarily. Because, you know, would you be willing to admit that you could do some work on the thoughts of your heart? You know, the thoughts of your heart is what jumped up when the, when the guy ran in front of you this morning on the way to church. And you, you might have said something, but it, it was definitely down in here. And you went, oh, oh. how many of you have you ever done that? Willing to admit it. Okay. Now you're going to find out that that's a characteristic of your new heart. The fact that you're willing to admit that you can take a little work. That's called a soft heart. See, if you had a hard heart, you're going, oh, who are you talking to? I, I don't have those problems. Okay, well, you just showed us another problem. We can see that one real clear. <laughs> Ooh, are you out there today? Amen. Glory to God. Okay, so go with me, if you would, to another one. Uh, Matthew, praise the Lord. Glory to the King. Chapter 24. Now our man is going to get saved. Ooh, there he is. Look at that. See, it is his heart is now right with God and he's working on his thoughts. Now we're just, you know, illustrating thoughts up there in the head region. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God is good. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Okay, Matthew chapter 12. Jesus, this is another, we're going to lift something out here. Okay. But I'll start reading to you in verse 33 of Matthew chapter 12. Uh, Jesus said, either make the tree good and his fruit good or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt for the tree is known by his fruit. O generation of vipers, he's not talking to you. How can you being evil, that was the scribes and Pharisees, speak good things for out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks? Now, if you read around that passage, they had just, the scribes and Pharisees had just been blaspheming Jesus and the Holy Ghost and were trying to accuse him of wrongdoing. Right there, just verses before that. So Jesus knew what was in their hearts and what he was explaining was, well, we can hear by listening to what you say what's in your heart. And, and so it was like an illustration to all the people they're watching, too. How many of you are out there today? So we, we look on. You know, it, I have to tell you, I, I believe that even though against my, my best efforts, I have become the older generation. <laughs> I've been trying to cover it up for a long time. <laughs> But there is another whole new generation. Look at all these young people in here. And they're watching all of this. They're watching us. Who are you out there? So when Jesus was ministering, it was the same thing. There, there was a, a people, a crowd of people close in, but then there were all the other people who were watching. Okay, and so God wants to talk to them too. You know, we, we have a television audience too. There's another several thousands of them, tens of thousands, however many, 
that watch these broadcasts. So there's another whole group that watch. There's people on the other side of the world that watch. Woo! People are always watching. Come on. Are you there? All right. So Jesus said to these scribes and Pharisees, don't try to cover it up because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Okay. So to our best efforts as believers, sometimes we hear things coming out of our own mouths and we go, oh, where did that come from? How many of you are willing to admit that? You said things with your own mouth that you were surprised that you even said that, especially in public. Come on now. Come on now, who's willing to admit it? There we go. See, so that's, that's evidence of a soft heart right there. All right, so our, our man is saved. As a matter of fact, let's go ahead and take the pressure off and have you turn over to Ezekiel chapter 36 so you can see your soft heart. Come on now. Hallelujah. Ezekiel chapter 36. Praise the name of Jesus. You see, the reason why this is important is because in the culture of the day, your heart is everything. But when you get into the Bible, your heart is just a part of you. It's not all there is to you. And as a matter of fact, if there's things in your heart that you don't like thinking, that you don't like saying, the bottom line of all this is, well, there's something we can do about it. And it's not particularly difficult as long as you're willing. How many of you are willing? Praise the Lord. You know, there, there's enough hate in the world today. I mean, I, I, I watch people real close. And they're, they're just to watch the way they handle things. And it's showing me what's on the inside of them. And you can hear, hear you know, they open their mouth and go, oh, I see. Come on now, are you there? And it's infectious. Okay. Now, but, but watch this. See, that this is for your benefit. Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 26, he says, A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. Now remember, your spirit is where your nature is. Your spirit is the life flow, life source. Okay? But he gave you a new heart too. I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and I will give you a heart of flesh. So let's do it again, a little exercise. How many of you are willing to admit that you can use a little work? Come on now. All right, that's your soft heart talking. The very fact that you're willing to admit that instead of you know, saying that you're already perfect, which is a statement in itself. Are you there? Okay, so your heart can use some work. Now, in uh, the four gospels, Jesus talked about our hearts. And so you and I get a new heart. In the parable of the sower, Jesus likened our hearts to a field. Now, the field will grow whatever is put in it. When we got saved, we got a new field. Brand new, fresh start. Now, I'm not a farmer, but, you know, I drive through the country and every year, just about this time of the year, the farmers start preparing the ground. Okay, they till it all up and it's all fresh and just dirt and, you know, but then you get a good wind blow and the next thing you know, uh, there's something growing there but it's not what the farmer planted. Now the farmer comes along and plants and then there's these things called weeds. Come on now. And they were just blown into the field. 
That's what Jesus is talking about, about your heart. You have to guard your heart with all diligence because the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, the lusts of other things enter into your heart and choke out the word. Welcome back. Just really a great thing that you're with us today on Contact. We're, we are kicking off an entire series. This message, Heart Abilities, is just the first part of it. Uh, but it's introducing the idea that there's more to you than you may think. And uh, also vitally important to keep these things in mind when you're talking about having a relationship with God. Because the way He created us is the way He sees us, relates to us, knows us, and yet you know, we, we point out the thing about brain because in our, in the, our world today, uh, you know, it's as though uh, your brain is doing everything. And, well, for instance, you know, the, the Bible tells you the faith is of the heart. So it, it's not a matter of what you think, it's a matter of what you believe. Right. It's interesting. The Bible talks about guarding your heart with all diligence. It doesn't say guard your brain. Yeah. It says guard your heart because your heart is that central part of you. Uh, I, I, people, some people have said we have this God-sized hole where every person is created with the need to reconnect with our Creator, the one who, who formed us and put our, our whole nature together and all of our gifts and talents everything. And so we have to guard our heart because things try to get in there that bring doubts about God's integrity. Yeah. You know, why all these things, bad things happen in the world? God must be mean. Yeah. You know, I don't want to cross him because he might, you know, he might give me a car wreck or, or hit me with a big Judge stick or burn it. my house down. No, <laughs> God, you know, right. like this is God, you know. And so the Bible says guard your heart because everything we do in our relationship with God is based on faith, our trust in Him, and so uh, heart ability is very, very important. It is. Yeah. It is very important. So we also want to take a moment to tell you a little bit more about our outreach endeavors uh, right here at Contact and our local church, Faith Landmarks Ministries. We'd like to ask you to help us uh, spread the gospel around the world by sowing a seed into this ministry. Contact and Faith Landmarks Ministries are good ground. Uh, you can find out all that you need to know about what we're doing uh, by visiting the website contact.tv and following the links. You can also sow a seed by clicking on the Give tab. And now we have a new way to give, and that's through uh, your phone. You can actually text it, and the information for that is at the bottom of the screen. So every seed that you sow to contact goes to support our missions efforts around the world, preaching of the gospel through our contact broadcast. Now, stay tuned uh, for just a, a moment here, and we want to talk to you more about what's coming. Yeah, and it's that time of year again. Camp Meeting 2018 is just around the corner, and it's time for you to start making plans to attend. We've got a great lineup of guests coming to share the Word and give you an impartation of the Spirit. This year, Camp Meeting will be October 7th through the 12th, and you can find all the information about our guests, service times, children's ministry, directions and even local hotels by visiting the camp meeting tab on our website faithlandmarks.org don't miss this powerful time in God make your plans to join us now The Bible is our greatest resource. It holds the key to our victory, our peace, our prosperity, and our salvation. But not everything within the Word of God is easily understood and oftentimes can be misinterpreted. Maybe you desire ministerial training or are looking for a deeper knowledge and stronger foundation of the Bible. Faith Landmarks Bible Institute offers you that strong foundation. With over 30 classes, up to three years of courses, and a dedicated group of teachers, FLBI sets you on the right track to fulfilling the Lord's will for your life. You can take classes on site, online, or on the go via our correspondence courses. On site registrations for the new fall trimester begin August 12th. Classes begin September 9th. 
Enrollment for online classes and correspondence courses are available year-round. For more information and to sign up, simply visit www.flbi.org or call our office at 804-262-7104. We look forward to helping you fulfill your destiny here at Faith Landmarks Bible Institute. You are the answer to a generation's cry for deliverance. It's time for an awakening among carnal Christians that says we are going to do something about it. Our God is God. Staring into your eyes makes my heart come alive. Suddenly brought to life when I met you. Reaching me on the skies, running deep, stretching wide. Perfect love realized here with you. Now this love is for you, you will never let go, never let go. More than just words left beyond my control Out of control This is real love This is real love We want to thank you for joining us today. We believe the word has been sown into your heart and is going to launch you through a bright future in him. But before we go, we want to invite you to join us at Faith Landmarks Ministries for any of our weekly services or our special events. We've got ministry and fellowship for all age groups and want you to know that you are welcome here. Now, if you can't join us in person, check out our website where you'll find links to download or stream other broadcasts and services. God bless you, and we'll see you next time on Contact.